and welcome into College Football Mornings brought to you by CampusToCanton.com. It is Tuesday. That means you're stuck with Colin and I to talk some waiver wire action. Colin, uh, we're getting to the end of the season here. Um, uh, we are assuming at this stage that your waivers are fairly picked over. Not a lot of guys hanging out there that are going to present uh, week-to-week value. Uh, if there are, I mean, you can just sort you can sort by points scored and look and see if somebody's doing well. Uh, but we, we want to give you guys, probably for the next couple of weeks here, are some names that uh, we might be stashing if we have uh, probably unlimited waivers. Like at this point, if you've got, if you only have like four waivers, you should have used them by now or use them today. Um, it, it, so uh, th- these are all names that, you know, they, they might not be accessible to you, but if they are worth taking a look at, if you got some bench spots. Yeah, I think there's a couple names on this list here um, that, you know, eye towards the future, but there's a couple guys on this list that I think if you're picking them up at this time this year could be starters for you next year or at least like nice rotational pieces. So there's some guys with some long term value on this list. Um, All right. So let's kick it right off here with a name that I had really never heard of um, before this week really was when he, he came on my radar here. Kavorian Brown. I hope I'm saying that right. Running back at UTSA. He has 3% rostered on fan tracks right now. After Sincere McCormick left last offseason, we've kind of been looking for a, a running back to stand out here. They brought on Trail on Smith. Uh, they had a couple of guys there on the roster that we thought could make the leap, but uh, there's not really been a consistent back there. But Brown, over the past few games, has been pretty dang good. 46 rushing attempts over his last three games combined. Uh, 296 yards and three touchdowns. So averaging a touchdown a game, 100 yards, getting uh, a decent volume there. Looks to have taken over this backfield at least for right now. He's a second year back. Uh, if you've never heard of him, he was pretty lowly ranked in last year's class. It's his second year on the roster. He's a true redshirt freshman. 5'9", 215. But he was pretty productive uh, in his high school days in Texas. Um, so you, you got to like the size, you got to like the offense he's in, you've got to like just, you know, kind of some of the peripheral things. We'll see if he continues to gain a stranglehold on this job because you have to figure if he does, uh, to round out the year, UTSA is not really a spot that's going to go out and get a guy to jump him. So I like Kavorian Brown, Colin, we're in a 20 teamer together. I actually went and picked him up, uh, today. I hate Monday one. waivers. I hate it. I love that there. I saw you there. got him for $8. I totally forget. I always forget about the Monday waivers. Sucker. Uh, yeah, so I went and added him there. Um, I was I looking for him other spots. just like maybe an hour or so before the show uh, like this morning and was not there. Sorry, Colin. But yeah, I mean, he was uh, he was really productive last game at UAB. He, um, he looked really good. And this UTSA offense is going to undergo a lot of change next year. Frank Harris is going to be gone. Uh, presumably Zakari Franklin will go. DeCorian Clark is probably gone. Um, you know, the, a lot of these receivers are, are going to be gone this passing offense. So he could be the focal point of that offense next year. So I, I do like uh, Kavorian Brown a lot. Um, but sticking with another Brown here, we have uh, Sam Brown, the wide receiver from Houston. Uh, he has been picking it up here of late. Over his last four games, he has 12, 8, 8, and 9 targets. Um, uh, that last nine target game came with uh, Matthew Golden coming back. So still seeing some volume there. Two of his last four games, uh, he has two touchdowns, over 20 fantasy points in three of his last four. Now, like I said, Golden did come back, so that could hurt his numbers a little bit moving forward the rest of this year. But with Nathaniel Dell likely leaving, that should open up targets for him next year. Uh, he's a freshman, so... Uh, you know, this is a guy that he's a third year freshman, by the way, just to throw that out there. He was originally at West Virginia and he transferred. Yes. Still a freshman still counts. Um, But yeah, so he's got some years of eligibility left. This should be an offense that'll have an opening there. Now, you know, I don't expect him to throw the ball 53 times like they did last week against SMU. So like I said, down the stretch here may not be super valuable, but with an eye towards next year, this is a guy I'm looking at. That whole offense is gonna is a, is pretty much a mystery next year. We're gonna assume that they lose Tank Dell here. We're gonna assume that they lose. Uh, they are going to lose. Um, um, Tune. Tune. Thank you, Clayton Tune. No real, true, obvious heir apparent quarterback. Is this a a transfer portal kind of school? There, there figures to be a lot of movement on that end of things. Um, you know, maybe they'll go get a guy uh, who we're gonna. Uh, 
I'll stop. Well, no, he's my name. I'm gonna I'm gonna say him right now. Have the order up here, calling Jacoby Criswell. Like th- that could be a spot for him, a, a quarterback like that, um, who is a guy that we're stashing. By the way, here I'll talk about him in a second. But so so Houston, there's a lot of uncertainty there. But I think with the, some of these guys, really beyond Golden, I would lean into the uncertainty a little bit. Probably get a lot of these guys for really really cheap. Browns an afterthought. You get him for for free places. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can definitely get him for free places. And and like you said, this is a this is definitely a, lo- a landing spot that I could see um, a transfer quarterback going there. You know, whether it is Colby Criswell, whether it's a guy like um, Sawyer Robertson, who he was from Texas, right? He's from the state of Texas, I think. Uh, I don't remember. I remember he's at a, he's a quarterback for Mississippi State. He's a guy that we liked coming in here. But, you know, with with Will Rogers playing the way he has, he's kind of been an afterthought. Uh, you know, Kyle McCord, if he loses a job, could go somewhere. He probably aims a little higher than Houston, but you never know. You know, Ty Thompson, there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks on the move this offseason, I think. So this is a landing spot, I think, uh, where we could see an, an, an infusion of talent at the quarterback position. Um, speaking of Jacoby Croswell, a guy we just mentioned, I have a hard time believing he'll stay at UNC just because that'll be, it'll be, I think his fourth year in school by the time that Drake may will have left that he could even touch that starting job might even be his fifth. Like he'll have been around for forever. He's too good of a quarterback to do that. Um, he's 5% rostered on fan tracks right now. I'd imagine his, his uh, percentage is a little higher in camps. Can't camp Canton leagues just because of the nature of the bigger rosters. Uh, but if he's available in yours, I mean, I, I really think this is a guy that hits the portal and quite frankly, you should also be looking at his teammate, Connor Harrell. I didn't look to see what his percentage is at, but I'd assume it's pretty low as well. Both of those guys, there's a chance that they could hit the portal because they're just too good to be sitting behind Drake May there. And it's not like UNC is Alabama where they can, you, you know, you you can play one season here and still get to the NFL. UNC not really proven that. Um, so I, I have to think that Criswell probably looks to leave. I don't have a, a landing spot for him. There are a number of different schools. I mean, uh, think of any school that's losing their quarterback this year, a team like UCLA, um, a, a, the, the Houston's of the world. Um, there, does Max Dugan leave a TCU? Like he could potentially go there. Like there are lots of different schools with potential openings. So I just think a blind stash and hoping that he ends up somewhere good um, is is not a bad play at this point. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Again, there's a number of other quarterbacks too that you could take a a blind stab at, but Jacoby Chris would probably be pretty high on my list of those quarterbacks, but. Uh, moving into the next name we have on the list here, uh, Edward Sadie, uh, running back for Temple. Um, he had a big week last week, but he's also been doing it for the past couple of games. Uh, his last three games, he has 20, uh, 14, and 24 carries. He's also been involved in the passing game a lot with 6, 10, and 4 targets. So he's really becoming the lead back at Temple, which is an offense that's you know on the rise here a little bit with um, EJ Warner at quarterback there, Kurt Warner's son, a little bit of better quarterback play than they've had in the past couple of years. I don't expect this to be an offensive juggernaut, but you know there could be some value to be had here. Now, he did get half of his yards and three of his four touchdowns last week. He ran for 265 yards and three touchdowns. So, you know, he is really come on late here. We'll have to see how he finishes the year, but he is just a sophomore. So he is definitely a name that I'm keeping an eye on um, down the stretch, maybe. And then with an eye towards next year. Yeah, I mean, if, if you look at his game logs, the attempts are, are really what's interesting here. Over the past three games, 2014 and 24, it looks like he's taken over this backfield. Is this a super explosive offense? No. Um, you know, you kind of mentioned, you know, competent quarterback play is like a yay for Temple. <laughs> like they finally have somebody that can throw a forward pass. But um, I, I I do like the, the in, increase in volume. And those are kind of the guys that we're keeping an eye on. You know, maybe he doesn't even stay at Temple. Maybe he heads elsewhere. Who knows? Potentially. Um, but uh, yeah, a good name there. Last one here, Colin, Dylan Goffney, uh, wide receiver at SMU there. We thought he could kind of step into the wide receiver two role behind Rasheed Rice. That didn't really happen this season, at least not consistently. Um, but he has been uh, has been getting a little more targeted here over the past uh, three or four weeks. Um, you know, basically he's been, he's been touchdown dependent this year. If he hasn't scored a touchdown, he really hasn't done that much for fantasy, but this past game, four targets, three catches, a hundred yards and that touchdown. Rasheed Rice has been targeted like crazy this year. There's no real other clear option for that number one wide receiver on the team, at least not in my opinion at this stage. So Goffney, a guy that was a fairly high, highly rated recruit coming out of high school, 
Um, I think he has a pretty solid chance to take over that role. And we saw that they're probably not going to see a, a downturn in offensive production with Tanner Mordecai leaving. That's Preston Stones there. He looked really good before he broke his collarbone. He'll be back. He'll be the guy next year. Um, no concerns about them maintaining that offensive um, strength. So uh, Goffney, guys like that in, in these high-powered offenses, they're nice stashes at this time of the year. Yeah, and SMU does have a tendency to feature one wide receiver with Rhett Lashley there. Like, that's just kind of his offense. So if Dylan Goffney can step up and be the guy, you know, I'm not expecting Rasheed Rice-type numbers, but, you know, 75 80% of Rasheed Rice, yeah, absolutely doable. And that's definitely valuable for your fantasy team. All right, guys, that's going to do it here. Uh, congrats to everybody who made the playoffs in their leagues. If you didn't, hopefully you pick up a couple of these names and we'll hit the ground running again in 2022 or 2023. Wow. Holy crap. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back next week uh, to give you some more Waiver Wire Tuesday names. Until next time, guys, I am Austin. And this is Colin. And have a good one.